Hello everyone in this video, let us uh, start looking into Jira's uh, database and uh, fetch the list of uh, issue types, but not just issue types, but also the uh, number of issues for each issue type. If you do a quick Google search and type in uh, Jira database schema, you will find a link where you can uh, take a look at this uh, schema. And this schema is, uh, in my opinion, quite useful because uh, although it is not really recommended to do things directly in the database, never really change anything unless uh, there is a serious need to do it. Maybe you are you 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 have to fix something. Maybe you have been instructed by Atlassian, or maybe if you know what you're doing, uh, then only change it. But we're not really going to change anything. We are going to basically look into the database and uh, fetch the information. Now this is, as I mentioned again, uh, as I mentioned before, it, it is not really recommended to do things in database directly. But if you want to learn how a tool is built, if you want to learn how Jira is built, how Jira works, how uh, Jira was uh, designed and how different entities, different elements interact with each other, their relationship, then looking in the database is a really good way. But anyways, uh, if you have to do some housekeeping activities, uh, sometimes you need to look in a database directly. So if you are serious about learning Jira, then I think uh, you should spend some time also you know, on the database. So th that is what I have wanted to do today. Uh, and maybe I'll create more videos on this. So in this video, I just want to do something very simple and straightforward. Uh, in Jira, we have issue types and we have, of course, issues. Now, if you look at this schema here and if you search for uh, something like uh, issue type, you will find uh, maybe some information about a table that actually stores the uh, issue type uh, or rather all the issue types in uh, your uh, Jira instance. So if you can see here, I have a table here. So there is a table called, uh, let me just wait for it to appear correctly. So yeah, this looks fine. So there is a table called uh, issue type. And in this table, as you can uh, guess, there is a list of all the issue types in the, in the system. Now I'll run one SQL query here called uh, select star from issue type order by p name p name is of course the name of the issue type and if i run this query here it will basically give me the list of all the issue types that i have in my in my in my system in my jira instance uh, ordered by their name so on top you can see alert bug and so on and right now i have 15 rows returned so it means that i have 15 issue types now i can of course verify this in Jira and I can uh, go to my Jira instance and I can take a look at those issue types that, he, that you can see here, alert, bug, change and so on. This is all good, but I want to do a few more things. I basically want to know uh, or rather I should say I need, I need to basically understand how many issues are there for each issue type. Now, the list of all the issues are stored in Jira issue table. So if you run this, select star from Jira issue. You can see here that you know it has returned uh, 223 rows and if I go to my Jira instance and if I do a quick search here on uh, my Jira instance, it has indeed 223 uh, issues. So what I want to do is I want to basically link this table to the or join this table to the issue type table. and uh, for doing this, I can use uh, the issue type ID. So in the Jira issue, you have one column, one field called uh, issue type. And if you look at your uh, issue type table, you should have a similar field. In this case, it is ID. So what we can do here is we can uh, combine these two. So I basically want uh, the issue type ID, issue type name which is of course coming from the issue type table, which is uh, IT in this case. And uh, I want to basically count the number of uh, those uh, issue types 
uh, that appears in the uh, Jira issue table, which is the JI. And uh, I'm of course uh, fetching this information from Jira, from issue type table, but I'm also joining, I'm doing a left outer join on uh, Jira issue table on the ID. So in the issue type table, we have the ID. In Jira issue table, we have issue type that contains the ID. And I'm also grouping it by, by uh, grouping it by um, the issue type ID. And I want this, this particular result to appear with the issue types with least number of issues. Now, if I run this, let us see what happens. It will give us the output like this, like this issue type ID has, which is of course, in this case, service request with approval, approvals. It has zero issues, alert has zero issues and incident has 81 issues. Now we can quickly go back to our Jira instance and uh, if I type in here Jira or rather I should say issue type is equal to what is the name? Service request with approval. So I can type in here service request with approval. It says no, zero issues. If I type maybe subtask, so I can uh, just change it to subtask and we have six issues, which is correct. And for incident, we have 81 issues. And it, it, it is actually the correct information. Now the whole point here is that uh, uh, by looking at the database, by looking at the schema, I can actually learn a lot about uh, how Jira works. And uh, you can see here, if you look at the schema here, and of course you can do this using uh, your SQL tools, but I'm just uh, trying to see how these are linked to each other. So this particular uh, table issue type is, uh, let me try to reduce the size. It is linked to the custom field table. It is also, so ID is also going somewhere. If I follow this trail, it is going to the project uh, and uh, no, not project. Let me go down further, further, further. So Jira issue. So this is the uh, Jira issue table where you have the issue type ID. So if you just, you know, do things directly with the database, it will really give you an opportunity to understand how Jira works. And uh, I'm sure if you are serious about uh, Jira administration, you will eventually come to a point where you might need to do something with the database. And uh, what I will be doing, I will be sharing this uh, this SQL query so you can um, use it. And I will definitely share more SQL queries uh, for you to do the same thing. And by the way, this is something that I'm, that I'm doing in MySQL. Uh, you can always, I mean, if you want, you can always modify it in, for, for, for Postgres or maybe for Oracle, for, My, for Microsoft SQL. Uh, but more or less it is, you know, the concept is same. If you know the schema, if you know the relationships between these different tables, I'm sure you can uh, figure out how to fetch the information directly from the database. And this is all I wanted to share in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today. Thank you very much.